Hey everyone, uh, first of all, thank you for all the attention, all the views and all the likes and comments for the previous video. I didn't expect that much attention to my humble person and yeah, it means world to me. Thank you. I hope one day we will become a huge friendly community of uh, people who just love their uh, environments and their setups, their like workflows and stuff like that. So yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Now, uh, in the comments under previous video, I received a bunch of comments about uh, my terminal setup and a lot of questions about how I set it up, what it is. So that's exactly what we're doing today. Let's get to it. First thing we need is to install the terminal. For me, it's Kitty, my terminal of choice. And you should definitely try it, especially if you want to follow my setup exactly how I do it. So to install Kitty, I will launch a built-in terminal called Terminal. And uh, installing Kitty is as simple as typing brew install cask Kitty. After a while, we will have Kitty installed. And now we can open Kitty by typing open minus a Kitty app. It will launch Kitty. Let's close native terminal. So here's Kitty. And the first thing I want to do is to navigate to my config folder. Then I will run kitten. It's a built-in Kitty command. Choose fonts. It will launch a bunch of fonts. And one I'm interested in is JetBrains Mono NL, which means no ligatures. Nerd font. Nerd font means it's packed with icons. Let's select this font, continue, enter to modify kitty.conf. Next up is a theme, and let me zoom in a little. Next up, I will run kitten themes, and uh, I want to find my favorite theme, which is cappuccino, specifically a mocha flavor, this one. Let's modify kitty.conf by pressing M, and I will reload the configuration. Now we can see the theme is applied. Let's zoom in again. Now we want to open the config itself. I will do that by running neovim with kitty slash kitty.conf. And here we are in the config. So first thing I want to do here is to change the font size to something like 21. Let's reload the config. Next up, I want cell height. Cell height defines how high the cell is because we can't control line height as in a usual text, but we can control this. So let's set it to 150, but not pixels, but percent, maybe even 170. And let's reload the config. It's looking better. So next one is background. I want to set blur. Let's uncomment that and I will set blur to 50. Now let's find opacity, uncomment that and I will set opacity to 0.7. And at this point, you see that there's no opacity and blur. That's because I need to restart Kitty. So let's quit it. Yes, and reopen. And here you can see blur and background. Let's go back to the config folder and open KittyConf again. Now I want to remove the decorations of this window. I can find decorations by typing hide window decorations and I will type tile bar only. Let's reload the config and apparently we need to restart Kitty again. And here we go. No title bar, blurred background and everything. The last part is to modify the theme. So let's again CD into config, open Kitty config and you can see I include current theme file at the very bottom of the config. Now I want to open this file. It's in the same directory as kitty.conf. We open it and I want to find a background property and I want to modify the color from this grayish bluish one to pure black. Let's reload the config and here we go. Now you can see the dark background. I will show it uh, to you in the end of the video how it looks overall. So now we need another tool called Starship. Starship is a shell prompt. It's cross shell, meaning it works with pretty much any shell you may mention. ZSH, new shell, fish, you name it. We install Starship by running brew install Starship. And now we can start modifying things. First thing we need to do is to create a directory called Starship. And we want to touch into Starship slash Starship. Dot 
now we want to modify the config. So let's open it in NeoVim. And we are presented with an empty file. Now we want to prepare the config. I will start with bringing this format here. Format defines how your prompt will look like. So the directory is displaying the current directory you're in. Git branch displays git branch if you're in a git repo. Fill is just a filler that separates left and right parts. Node.js, Bun, Python, and Rust display respective versions of these languages slash environments. Docker context displays the context where your Docker is running in. For example, for me, it will be orb stack. In your case, it can be Docker desktop. Line break separates the system information from prompt input. Jobs display the number of background jobs running currently. And character is just this little arrow you will see in the demo. Add new line set to false because I don't want a new line separation between prompts. Now let's configure each section of the Starship. I will bring this configuration here. Now this is configuration for each section. Fill, and we set a symbol to space so we don't have any symbols between the left and right parts. Character displays the little arrow here, and it can be different of different color depending on your current prompt state. For example, in my case, I use Vim bindings in prompt, so it will display this back arrow when I'm in normal mode. Also for replace and visual. Next up, directory. I truncated by eight, so any path longer than eight will be truncated. And then I just set up a bunch of icons for my languages. Same with Docker context. Now this is config, but if we save it, we still don't see anything. So let's open my ZSH config. And I will add a few lines here. So first one is starship config. I want my config in .config slash starship slash starship .tunnel. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. Next, I want to initialize Starship on shell initialization. Let's save it, quit NeoVim, and restart the shell. And now you can see that the prompt changed. A folder displayed at the top and a little arrow on the line when the where the cursor is. What's cool about it is that if I navigate to a different folder that contains some environment, for example, my personal project, you will see that it now displays branch name and also node version and bun version. Or if I go to my working project, you can see that there is also orb stack Docker context displayed. Also, if I open NeoVim here and then suspend it by pressing Control Z, you can see a little star here on the left. This indicates a background job. If I open one more session of NeoVim and suspend it as well, you can see there's two now. If I type FG and then quit new of him, you can see the star is just there without a number. And if I open the last background job and quit it too, you can now see that there's no star. So that's Starship. And the next piece is Tmux. Tmux is a terminal multiplexer that allows you to have background sessions, windows, and splits within those windows to leave separately from your terminal. That means when you close the terminal, the session continue to leave there under the hood. So if you quit your terminal and open it again and attach to a session, it will be exactly the same as you left it. Let's install tmux with brew install tmux. I have it installed already, so I want to navigate to one of my sessions. So I will go to dot .files, and now you can see we're in a tmux. In the top left corner, you can see the folder I'm in currently git slash dot files, then get information about my branch, amount of changes made to this branch, and next up, a window, currently only one. So let's open tmux slash tmux.conf. And now you can see that few first lines are about config reloading. I bind control B R to reloading my config and to display a little message that config was reloaded. So if I press control B plus R, it reloads. Next up, some, some color settings. And the fun part is in formatting stuff. We have status format to display current path. And uh, this little script down there is to truncating the path pretty much like Starship does. Next, gitmux. Gitmux is this plugin that you see displays branch and changes in, in this branch. Time format is for formatting time. So you can see it's 8.90 PM for me now. Next up, these roundy things. These are for rounded corners for status and windows. Next, some formatting for window and uh, active window. 
Also, you can see I set this little magnifying glass icon to display that currently this window is maximized. You can see now I have zoomed in window. I can close it now. Again, roundy things. Now here, status left and status length. I set the look of the status itself. You can see status open and status close are those roundy things. Next, same for the like status right where the clock is. It's also rounded. Now, active and uh, cur current window and just window. They are different just uh, with this uh, highlighted number. I enable clipboard and focus events and set the default terminal to screen 256 to make sure that my terminal is full color. These settings are for image displaying in Tmux because by default, it doesn't play nice with images. Unlike Kitty itself that has its own image protocol. Not sure what these are. This one is for undercurl, the squiggly line under the undercurl world, word, undercurl word. This is for underline, same thing, but just straight line. I set default terminal to current terminal and we don't kill Tmux when we exiting. Next up, history limit. It's just for infinite scroll back. I set my key bindings to VI mode so I can navigate with Vim bindings, VI bindings. These are for splits and panes. So I can press Ctrl B and V to vertical split or Ctrl B H for horizontal split and a bunch of global key binds that for some reason don't work with fresh kitty install. Apparently I forgot something about the config and I will edit in the comments if I found find what it is. So I can showcase them right now, but this option G opens LazyGit in a pop-up, option Y opens Yazzie, option D opens gh that I covered in a previous video. This is just a scratch terminal that opens an in dialog window, in pop-up window, and option N opens a new window. We can now escape from select mode, copy mode with escape. This is our copy mode. We can now yank with Y and it will work nicely. It will synchronize with your system clipboard. And next up, just my plugin manager. I set up a bunch of plugins here. Tmux is for navigating between Tmux and NeoVim. If I have splits, I can navigate between splits in NeoVim and Tmux without even noticing that there's different splits. Tmux yank makes yanking a little bit better. Tmux Resurrect is a session manager that allows me to save and restore sessions. And TSmart Tmux Session Manager is a session manager that allows me to switch between sessions. So if I press um, Control B, capital T, I will see this. For some reason, Keycaster doesn't show the keybind when I press it. Like it just doesn't output anything. But it's Control B and uh, capital T. And I can now switch between different sessions. And the cool part about this plugin is that it allows me to use Dockside to switch. So for example, if I have um, I, some sort of directory here, for example, config, I can type config. And uh, if, if I ever visited this folder, it will be here. So for example, I want to open sketchy bar. And now we're in sketchy bar session. And we can now go back to dot files and we're back. And yeah, that's my terminal setup. I promised you to show how it looks without background browser. So let's close it and close this one like that. We can now quit new of them. And this is my config. And yeah, that's all I get for you today. Thank you for watching. If you found this video useful, please like it. Also subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss any